Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood, and I'm going to go over a complete design process of my gift giving dollar bill holder, currency holder, uh, start to finish design on how I created this. And if you watch this design process, regardless what currency you use, you will have the information you need to be able to design one to hold your currency. And it's not that difficult. So stay tuned. So I started with Googling the dimensions of the US dollar and Good old Google says this is the exact dimensions of the U.S. paper currency. So I'm going to use these dimensions to start my first toolpath. Now, I learned that other countries obviously don't use these same dimensions. And even in Australia, they don't even use the same dimensions for their currency. Each denomination has a different size bill. Alright, let's put this on a toolpath. I'm on toolpath. Now let's set the dimensions to 1.5. And I had a request to make my pointer larger so it's easier to follow on these videos. So if this is too obnoxious, let me know. Or if you like that, let me know. So we got a width of 6.14 and a height of 2.61. That is our US currency. And I'm gonna leave that on the toolpath because that is gonna be how large I need a space to be to slide that dollar bill into. So first thing I'm gonna do is I, I need to determine the overall height of my piece and I'm going to draw another rectangle and I'm going to put it on a cut path just a line in line mode and I know that I, if this is a height of 2.61 then I want this one to be 2.61 plus 0.5 starting there first I just added a half inch because I'm going to use a quarter inch rail spacer but I also want to give an additional 1% space so that it's not a tight friction fit for that dollar it can just slide in there so I'm going to come here and I'm going to tell it Instead of 31.11, I'm going to tell it I want it to be a 101%. I tab. There we go. So I added 1% to the height. And if I put... Now, now the width, I don't need the width to be any wider than the 6.14. So I can come back to here and tell that 6.14. And center those up. All right. Now, if I draw another rectangle, that's going to be 6.14 and a quarter inch. And I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate that. Uh, I didn't. In fact, let's just delete that. Control D and now select it and now just arrow it up. There we go. So those are quarter inch spacers that I will actually glue to the top here. Of course, aligned better than that and then to the bottom here. Then I'm going to have a piece Control D, 
of that'll go on top, but I need to have the center of it cut out to reveal the dollar bill and have places to personalize it. And I want to make sure that the offset that I use here will cover all of this up. I'm, that's why I made these a quarter of an inch. So I can come here and give this piece an offset inward using corners of 0.3 inches. And group those together. And let's align that to the top. And align this one to the bottom. So now you can see there, there's just enough. That blue toolpath is the dollar bill. There's a little gap there and a little gap there. So it's not going to be an excessively tight fit. It should slide in and out of there pretty easy. And then when we take this and move it into place, since I used three tenths of an inch, it's going to hide the rail up top and the spacer rail at the bottom. So this is almost designed, almost. I want to make this easy to pull the dollar bill out. So I'm going to take my ellipse tool and I'm just going to draw an ellipse that looks good. I want to make sure that it's not going to be over six tenths of an inch wide. So that's three tenths of an inch. Uh, so I can actually stand to go, we'll, we'll go uh, 0.5. We'll go half inch wide, not caps locks, tab. There we go. All right, and why do I want to do a half? Because if I take that and I put it on the center. Come on, select it. And now just use my control arrows and arrow that over till I get that right on the center of that outermost, like there. When I put, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna go ahead and say control D, duplicate it. Move it over here. Get that one in the center. Using my control and arrows to control that precise movement. And that's all for our close. Now I'll select both of those. Put those to center of each other. Well, I just slid it over so they will be. So group it. And now I'll put that in the center. There we go. And now I'm going to say A minus B. And that just put me two little slots right there for finger holding, grabbing that dollar bill. And by staying with uh, a half inch there, then that should, and I went in the middle, that right there should be a quarter inch indentation, which should be hidden. There we go. By my three tenths of an inch frame goes around the outside. So that's going to be a very clean, in fact, we'll put this uh, on a different layer and put it in a fill mode and show you how it covers everything up. So that's how you will see it from the front. Cool, right? I think so. All right, let's go back, put that back on our cut path. There we go. All right, now, this is a very, very basic uh, two-piece design with those little bitty inserts to create the space to weld up in there, get the dollar bill out of there. So if you didn't want a piece that was going to stand up or be a frame or you just wanted a little handheld piece that you can transfer, that's, that's all you need right there. And start customizing and adding your, your work to it. 
But if you do want to have it on a stand like I created here, then you're not going to use just a plain piece like this at the bottom. You're going to put a little tab on it. And what I do is the material I'm using to create these out of is 1.6 or 1.7, 1.6 to 1.7 millimeters thick. So I will draw a rectangle. Put it in millimeters. Tell it I need it to be 1.65 millimeters high. I get a real tight friction fit that way. And the, the width here does, doesn't really matter, but I'll just tell it 90 so it's a nice even number. I'm going to control D, duplicate that, move it down here out of the way. Well, I didn't move it. I, I had the height selected, so let's just d delete that. Control D. Now select it. And now use the arrow keys to air it down out of the way. Now I've got two identical pieces here. That one I'm going to dock it straight up. And then I'm going to select that one by holding my shift and click it and then tell it to go to center. And weld those together. All right, it did not weld. Don't know why it did not weld. Let's take go back here, undo. Tell that to dock it straight. Do I have any padding? No padding, zero padding. Dock it straight up. And now select both of those and tell it to weld. That should have welded those together, but it didn't do it. So when the, and there are times when that happens. So what you do, undo that weld. Come back here, and the docking didn't work. We're going to just hold our shift key and air it up. That's way overlapped, but that's okay. Now I'll select them both, weld them together, go into tools, resize slots and selection, change my tab height, and my new tab height is going to be 1.65 millimeters. Say okay. And now I can check using my ruler. There it is, 1.65. Done. Okay. And I actually go ahead and use my ruler. Make sure that's still a quarter inch. That's quarter inch. So okay. So now there is a bottom piece with 1.65 millimeter tab sticking out. Draw another rectangle, and this time we're going to do, let's say, um, 6.14 wide uh, inches, go to inches, 6.14, and we'll give it uh, 0.7 width. Now select that. Hold our shift and that, tell it to go to center. That was 0 0.7. We're going to come out our radius. We're going to do a 0 0.35 inch radius. That way it'll go exactly half. So it'll give a nice round edge like that and that. Group those together. And now that tab will fit perfectly into that slot. Nice tight friction fit. Glue that to the top. That goes on top of that. And we just made a dollar bill holder. Now let's make a fancy dollar bill holder out of this basic design. And here are some samples. These are all available on hobowithwood.com. This is for weddings and anniversaries. Congratulations. Birthday. I drew this cake in Lightburn using just the primitive tools and the array tools. 
And I actually made this even nicer using the transform tool. And this is congratulations with the tassel cap and the diploma. So how do we get these pieces in there? Real simple. Real, real simple. First, create your text. What's it going to, what are we celebrating here? Um, it's a boy. Put our cap locks off. We're doing a baby shower. And actually, it's easier if you just work all this in one layer for right now. Put this wherever you want it. Like when I'm doing this, what I'm looking at is the eye looks good there, but that Y looks kind of funky. If I line that up, it's sticking down too low, and if I got it up here, I think the rest of it's too high. But I like the way that looks right there. So I'm going to put that over there. I'm going to do an offset of that. I need to do an outward offset. I want to use round. That's way too large. But that's not large enough because you can see it's individual offsets for each of the words. I want them to be connected a little bit. Like that. Now your first thing some of you might notice is that Y offset sticking way out past there. Well that's okay. I can clean that up real easy. But that's where I want that Y positioned because I think that's going to be the best look whenever I'm finished with this. So first thing I need to make sure, see so okay that's the offset I want. These two, this inner and outer, that has to be grouped. And these are, but when, since they're grouped now I can hold my shift key and select just that offset and tell it to weld those together. Now I need to get rid of these funky humps. The funky humps. That's a 1980s boy band. The funky humps. <laughs> Alright. These need to be ungrouped. Go into node editing. And now grab those and hit the letter D. Grab those and hit the letter D. Now I'll go back to select tool. Everything's still selected. Tell it to group everything back together. And I think there's some baby feet I got in here somewhere. Baby shower. Yeah. Add to project. Uh, I just want the feet. So we're going to come over here. And select just the feet get rid of this Now I'm going to leave these in the uh, oh, double alt layer, the black layer, and show you why I left It's a Boy in the cut layer. If I do this, I'll do an offset of this. That size is satisfactory. Say OK. These are grouped. And I grab that offset and tell it to weld. Well, that time it did okay, but priority matters. If we undo that and we select that offset and then select that group and tell it to weld, well, that time it still didn't. I have had instances where if not working with two different layers, it will change the whole everything over to the other layer that I didn't want it to be. So that's why when I'm doing this, I usually leave it all in the same layer until I'm ready to start identifying the engravings and the cuts. So those that, that little piece right there needs to be deleted. I can only do that after I ungroup it and delete that.
Now, if you knew the boy's name, you could put it in here. You know, congratulations, you add whatever you need to or want to. But you see how easy it is to add those things. Um, it's not difficult. And I designed that pretty darn fast once I knew what my base size was. Create that work template. allowed for a quarter inch rail then allowed an additional one percent of that for the overall height kept my width to the exact width of the dollar added those little finger holes for the back optional tab on the bottom to create a stand you can just duplicate this one if you don't want to stand use the same thing over and over down top and bottom so that's an optional stand right there how easy that was to create and this is not even gonna be that long of a video I did that in real time including all my screw-ups if you are in Australia you now know how to create your own currency holder uh, I don't even know do you still use paper currency over there in the UK let me know put it in the comments I don't know I, I think you've just about gone cashless just about um, I'm, Canadians you got your own dimensions there easy enough but this is something that's a simple enough design that you can do this really really quick now you see how to lay that out and the thought process what you need to think of when you're doing it it ain't hard it ain't rocket science trust me I can do it <laughs> it can't be too difficult <laughs> alright guys so I'm going to wrap this video up here, uh, but I do have one big question and a big favor to ask of you. I'm getting ready to come up on my one year anniversary on YouTube as Hobo with Wood. I started this kind of as a farce. I never dreamed I'd be at the point I am now in a year. Uh, but I'm extremely thankful that I am. I have a really good support system. I've got some really good uh, patrons on Patreon. I could always use more if you want to consider supporting the channel and become a regular supporter. But what I'm going to ask you now is I have, what have we got as of this moment? As of this moment, we have 3,775 subscribers, just under 3,800 subscribers as of May 29th, 2023. What I would love to have all of my subscribers do, send me an anniversary gift. If you have found my channel to be helpful and informative, even if you've only been a subscriber for a month, but if you've been along the, for the ride of this journey and you've seen this growth process, and by my growth process, I mean this growth process. When I started, I didn't have any, any of this. In fact, my anniversary, I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing something because this is driving me crazy. But as an anniversary gift, if you've valued this channel over the past year and you really want to see it hang on, I'm asking you for an anniversary present. Use my. Uh, down in the show more section there'll be a few links a couple of options there'll be a Zelle option a PayPal option uh, I'm gonna ask if anybody who truly values this channel and wants to see it to continue I'm gonna ask you strong how about a one-time $20 anniversary gift man if if I could get a large percentage of my subscribers to do a one-time anniversary gift Man, that would help me out so much and get this through the summer and get this channel really growing. Uh, it would be so appreciative. And that way you're not you're not committing to a patron. Uh, you're not committing to a, a monthly, a one-time anniversary gift. 20 bucks. If you can't do 20, any, any amount's greatly appreciated. And um, it, it would mean a ton. I, I couldn't express how much. But thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for all of the comments and the feedback. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, 
to uh, continuing to grow this channel and learn. And I'm really excited about the new features coming to Lightburn when we can start using our uh, routers, our 3D routers instead of the lasers. That's coming this fall, and I'm, I'm anxious to get that going. So thank you for being a supporter, both just watching the channel, and if you've helped me out financially, a huge thanks. Seriously consider that uh, anniversary gift. Think about it, 20 bucks, one time, it's not even a dollar a day, and you've benefited from this for a year. I, I would benefit greatly if you just dug in your pocket and did that. Don't even think twice about it. Just do it. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.